Logan ends up losing his regeneration powers to a powerful clan led by a mutant viper, and now he will have to defeat the Great Silver Samurai to survive. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, The Wolverine, from 2013. When an atomic bomb was about to be dropped on Nagasaki, the Japanese soldiers decided to free the prisoners so that they would have a chance to save themselves. Among the members of the Japanese army was Sergeant Yoshida, who freed Logan from the pit where he was being held. Soon after, the soldier joined his colleagues to take his own life, before the base where they were was hit by the explosion. However, just as Yoshida was about to be eliminated, Wolverine appeared to save him and pushed the sergeant into the well. The mutant then uses a metal bar to protect him while his own body is exposed to the effects of the bomb. Minutes later, when the explosion ends, Wolverine gets up and Yoshida is startled to see the state of the man's body. What he didn't realize was that the prisoner was a mutant and, in a few seconds, his entire body regenerated. Even several years after the explosion of the atomic bomb, Wolverine is tormented by these memories and wakes up next to Jean Grey. For a moment, the man forgets that he hurt the woman he loved with his claws and realizes that it was just another dream, because the real Jean has perished. After getting up, Logan walks through the forest until he reaches the city and, after doing his shopping, he returns to the forest. During the night, while he was sleeping, he heard some screams and gunshots, so he decided to leave the cave to investigate. Following the footprints left in the mud, Wolverine finds a wounded bear and, heartbroken, he uses his claws to eliminate the animal. Otherwise, he would have suffered for days before dying. Furious, the mutant goes after the hunters and finds the guy who claims to have been attacked by the bear. The hunter reveals that he was in the forest with his friends when the beast appeared and eliminated them all. According to Red, he was the only survivor of the group. Furious, Logan uses the arrow he found stuck in the bear to pierce Red's hand. The weapon is soaked in poison, which is an illegal practice as it causes great suffering to the animal. In an attempt to fight back, Red smashes a glass cup over Logan's head and is about to be eliminated by his claws when Yukio appears and reveals that those guys will perish in a car crash the following week. At that moment, one of the bar patrons draws his gun to eliminate them, but Yukio is quicker and uses her sword to cut the man's neck. She then asks Wolverine to accompany her and they both get in the car to flee the place. When they are alone, the woman reveals that she has been looking for Logan for over a year, because Master Yoshida asked her to give him that sword. Finally, Yukio reveals that Yoshida is dying and wants to thank Wolverine personally for saving his life years ago. The problem is that the man lives in Tokyo, so Yukio has to convince the mutant to accompany her there. When the pair arrive at the mansion, Logan meets Shingen, Master Yoshida's son, and is impressed by his ability to handle a sword. Then he sees Mariko and feels sorry to see her so sad to see her grandfather in his last moments. After taking a shower and getting a haircut, Wolverine is finally allowed to visit his old friend and Yoshida reveals that he didn't call him there just to say goodbye. The old man then decides to make a proposal and claims that he can cure Logan of his curse. For decades, the mutant has watched his loved ones perish without being able to do anything to join them. Therefore, Yoshida reveals that he has found a way to end Logan's eternity and allow his suffering to be interrupted. The scientists working for Yoshida believe that Wolverine's healing ability can be transmitted to another host and, once this process is complete, Wolverine will become a mortal human being, just like everyone else. However, the mutant refuses and Yoshida keeps trying to convince him. According to him, Mariko, his granddaughter, is in danger and needs her grandfather to protect her. On leaving the old man's room, Logan sees Mariko arguing with her father. After being humiliated, the young woman runs towards the cliff to take her life, but Wolverine manages to stop her from jumping. Minutes later, during a conversation with Yukio, the man discovers that she was adopted by Master Yoshida when she was still a child, having been found rummaging through garbage in search of food. Since then, she has become like a sister to Mariko. The swordswoman says that the next morning a plane will take Logan back to the United States and advises him to go to sleep to rest from the trip. However, during the night, Wolverine is surprised by an unexpected visitor and, when he wakes up, the woman has disappeared. He then learns that Mr. Yoshida perished during the night and decides to attend the funeral. When he gets there, Wolverine comes across Dr. Green, the old man's doctor, and begins to suspect that she is planning something. He then spots Mariko next to her fiancé, Noboro Mori, who is the Minister of Justice, but the young woman doesn't seem to be happy with him. During the ceremony, Logan realizes that something is wrong and tries to stop Mariko from approaching the coffin. However, just then, one of the guys conducting the ceremony takes off his costume and shoots Logan while his colleagues capture Mariko. The Yakuza gang is armed and takes out several guests with their shots, so after recovering from the attack, Wolverine decides to act. 
After getting up, the mutant goes after the tattooed guys while Yukio eliminates the terrorists with her sword. At that moment, an archer who was hiding on the roof also enters the fray and uses his arrows to attack the criminals. During the battle, Dr. Green takes the opportunity to shoot some footage of Wolverine and, when one of the enemies points a gun at her, she eliminates him with her poison. After eliminating all the opponents who try to take him down, the mutant goes after the men who are with Mariko and manages to defeat them. However, after being shot several times, Wolverine appears to be weakened and needs Harada's help to get rid of the criminals. At this point, he flees through the city in the company of Mariko, who, thanks to her fighting skills, has managed to free herself from the clutches of the men who tried to capture her. While the pair are being chased through the streets of Tokyo, Harada goes after them and during the chase manages to put an end to some of the criminals. When she realizes that Logan is bleeding, Mariko advises him to see a doctor and says that she will go home alone. However, Wolverine doesn't listen to her and accompanies her to the subway. After getting on the train, the man notices that his wounds aren't healing and wonders what's wrong with him. When he comes out of the bathroom, he finds the surviving members of the gang and once again has to fight them. This time, however, Wolverine is alone. While trying to throw the people off the train, he also ends up being pulled off and has to fight the Yakuza member on the roof of the vehicle. After getting rid of him, Wolverine returns to the wagon and convinces Mariko to get off with him at the next station. While they think about what to do next, they decide to rent a hotel room for the night and Logan stays up to keep the young woman safe. However, as he has lost a lot of blood in the last few hours, Wolverine collapses and Mariko asks the hotel owner for help in getting a doctor to treat him. Realizing that he is not healing as easily as before, Logan comes to the conclusion that Dr. Green is responsible for this, as he remembers seeing her in his room the night before. Meanwhile, the doctor, who is actually a viper capable of poisoning her enemies, goes to meet Harada and threatens him to convince him to work for her. The archer is actually a security guard hired by Mr. Yoshida, but now that the old man has perished, Dr. Green is in charge. The woman reveals that she has suppressed Wolverine's powers and needs to find him to finish her work. To do so, she enlists the help of the archer. After a few hours on the bus, Logan and Mariko approach the city of Nagasaki and walk to a country house belonging to the young woman's family. During dinner, Logan asks Mariko who the archer was at the funeral and the young woman reveals that they were childhood friends. The couple wanted to get married, but their relationship was blocked by Mr. Yoshida. Before he perished, the old man made a revelation to his granddaughter and said that he had left his entire company in her name. In three days' time, when the judge reads the will, Mariko will become one of the most powerful people in Japan. As for her marriage to Noboro, there are no feelings involved. All Mariko is doing is following her father's orders, because she doesn't want to dishonor him. In the morning, Mariko contacts Yukio and reveals her whereabouts to her. The young woman then goes out to talk to her neighbors and asks Logan to help her get rid of a tree that has been cut down nearby. After carrying out the work, the mutant realizes that he is very tired and once again has confirmation that his powers are not as strong as before. At that moment, he sees the place where he was trapped when the atomic bomb exploded and walks to the well where he and Yoshida hid. Hours later, when it starts to rain, the couple return home and spend the night together. That morning, Yukio has a dream and wakes up frightened, having predicted Logan's perishment. In the morning, when he wakes up, the mutant hears the screams of Mariko, who has just been kidnapped. The woman is being escorted by two members of the Yakuza gang and Wolverine tries to catch up with her, but is shot in the leg and is unable to prevent the young woman from being taken away. Seeing the car pulling away, Logan tries to gather information from the guy who was left behind and interrogates him to find out who is behind Mariko's kidnapping. While walking through the city, Wolverine comes across Yukio. After the nightmare, the woman decided to go to meet the mutant to warn him of his elimination and found him with a wound in his leg. After getting into the car, Logan orders the young woman to take him to Noboro's house, but before Logan gets out of the car, Yukio reveals that she saw his elimination. Even after hearing the exact description of his elimination, Wolverine remains determined to rescue Mariko and asks Yukio to wait for him in the car. However, the swordswoman decides to go out to help him and says she will act as his bodyguard. Upon entering Noboro's apartment, Wolverine finds him accompanied by two women and orders them to leave. Furious, the mutant corners the Minister of Justice and tells him that he only has one chance to explain why he wants his fiancé eliminated by members of the Yakuza. Initially, Noboro refuses to open his mouth, but after taking the first punch, he decides to tell the truth and says that since he fell ill, Yashita has spent billions of dollars storing adamantium in his secret laboratory. The old man did this in secret to try to prolong his life, but none of his efforts brought the expected results. 
All he did was bring his company to the brink of bankruptcy and yet Shingen was always there to support him. The man tried to be a good son in the hope that he would be rewarded after his father's perishment, but Yoshida left his entire empire to Mariko. Furious, Shingen asked Noboro to help him eliminate his own daughter and offered him a large fortune in exchange for the service. After hearing the truth, Wolverine becomes even more furious and throws the Minister of Justice out of the window. Luckily, the man falls into a swimming pool and manages to survive. That night, Mariko is taken back to the mansion and meets her father. During a brief conversation, the man reveals that he was the one who ordered the young woman's elimination and shows no remorse for his actions. While he threatens to eliminate her, a group of ninjas invade the mansion and eliminate all the guards to find Shingen. When he realizes that his life is in danger, the man tries to escape, but ends up being surrounded and Mariko is taken out of the house. The young woman is terrified and doesn't understand what is happening until she meets Harada, her childhood friend. The man then reveals that he went there to save her and accompanies her to safety. Just then, Dr. Green bursts into Shingen's office and pierces his neck with a poison pen. While the businessman writhes in pain, the woman and her ninjas leave. Soon after, Wolverine and Yukio appear. Upon entering the house, the pair find a note left by the mutant and discover the exact location where Mariko was taken. Before going to meet the young woman, Logan decides to use Master Yoshida's medical equipment to investigate what is wrong with his body and finds a parasite lodged in his heart. Determined to remove the thing, Wolverine uses his claws to open a hole in his chest in order to reach his own heart. Just then, Shingen appears, determined to eliminate Logan, but Yukio is there to defend him. During the battle, the young woman picks up a sword to duel Shingen and, meanwhile, Logan manages to remove the parasite that was lodged in his heart. After doing so, the mutant's heartbeat stops, just as Yukio predicted. While trying to protect her friend's body, the young woman ends up being defeated and is about to be eliminated when Wolverine wakes up and attacks Shigen. After being struck by a sword, Logan immediately regenerates and realizes that he has regained his powers. Even after having his abdomen pierced several times by the swordsman, the mutant remains unharmed and Shigen ends up being eliminated by his claws. When she wakes up, Yukio is relieved to see Logan alive and says that this is the first time she has missed a prediction. After checking that her friend is all right, Wolverine takes the note left by Dr. Green and goes to meet Mariko. When she meets the doctor who was responsible for looking after her grandfather, the young woman discovers that it was she who eliminated him and ends up being attacked. At that moment, Mariko collapses in Harada's arms and is taken to a room. When she wakes up, the young woman walks into the laboratory and finds the Viper next to a suit of armor made of adamantium. After several hours on the road on his motorcycle, Logan arrives at the place where the young woman is. However, to get there, the mutant has to get past Harada and his men, who are part of the Shadow Clan. When he realizes that Wolverine has regained his powers, the archer decides to play dirty and infects the tips of his arrows with a poison. Even after his back is pierced by dozens of arrows, Logan remains standing, but when Harada hits him with the poisoned arrow, he collapses. Hours later, he wakes up trapped in a chair next to Dr. Green, who orchestrated the whole plan to capture Mariko just to get the chance to experiment on Logan. Luckily, Yukio has just arrived on the scene and breaks into the property to rescue her sister and her friend. During a conversation with Wolverine, the Viper reveals that, as well as being a doctor, she specializes in heavy toxins and is genetically immune to any poisonous substance known to humans. Now that Logan has been captured, Mariko is free and Harada tries to convince her to go home, but the young woman refuses to leave the mutant behind. Instead, she seduces her old friend to keep him distracted and steals the knife that was attached to his uniform. After hitting him, Mariko rushes to help Wolverine, who has just discovered that the armor made of adamantium can be remotely controlled to move. Just as Wolverine was about to lose his claws, Mariko appeared and stopped the attack. At that moment, the chair in which the mutant was trapped ends up being destroyed and he manages to free himself. After rescuing the young woman, Logan flees and is pursued by Dr. Green, but the woman ends up being stopped by Harada, who shoots an arrow through the woman's heart to prevent her from hurting Mariko. Even after suffering a huge fall, the doctor survives and goes after Logan, who is currently being pursued by the Silver Samurai. After knocking it down, Wolverine has to get up to avoid being destroyed by the creature, because that's what it was created for. During the battle, the robot finally manages to rip the claws out of his opponent's right hand and Wolverine screams in pain. Meanwhile, Dr. Green begins to change her skin and becomes even more powerful than she used to be. After finding a way into the lab, Yukio manages to break in and starts a duel against the Snake Woman. 
A few floors up, Logan tries to escape, but is once again surrounded by the Silver Samurai and is about to be eliminated when Harada appears and shoots an arrow through the armor's head. At this point, the archer is eliminated and Wolverine has the chance to steal one of his enemy's swords. With his blade in hand, he rips off the robot's head and throws it out of the tower. Accidentally, Logan also ends up falling, but he uses his claws to hold on and climb the wall. When he reaches the top, he comes across the samurai's remains and believes that he has been destroyed. Suddenly, however, the monster rises up and slashes the claws from his opponent's left hand. During his battle against Dr. Green, Yukio has a vision and learns how her opponent will perish. She immediately uses this knowledge to her advantage and ties a rope around the woman's neck. The young woman then attaches the viper's body to the elevator cables and the doctor ends up having her head cut off. Meanwhile, Logan keeps trying to free himself from the silver samurai's clutches and has his bones pierced by him. The mutant believed that the armor was controlled remotely and is surprised to discover that it is being commanded by Master Yoshida himself. The old man faked his own perishment to capture Logan and force him to transfer his ability to regenerate to him. As the claws of his armor pierce Wolverine's bones, the mutant's powers are transferred to Yoshida and the old man's body begins to rejuvenate to the detriment of Logan's health. When she discovers that her grandfather is behind the evil plan, Mariko decides to act and throws one of Wolverine's claws at the head of the businessman, who is now as young as he was when he was saved by the mutant. Then Mariko pierces her grandfather's neck and Logan has the chance to eliminate him once and for all. Now that the adamantium has been removed from his body, his claws are no longer covered in metal and are once again made of bone. However, that doesn't stop Logan from piercing the silver samurai's chest and throwing him off the cliff. After eliminating his enemy, Wolverine lies down to rest and is relieved to see that Mariko and Yukio are okay. The following week, after the reading of the will, Mariko becomes the new CEO of the technology company Yoshida and says goodbye to her adopted sister, who has now decided to go her own way. The woman then goes to talk to Logan and tries to convince him to stay in Tokyo with her, but the mutant says he must follow his destiny as a soldier. After kissing goodbye, the couple split up and Wolverine gets on the plane with Yukio. In the company of his new bodyguard, Logan decides to return to the United States to find out what challenges await him there.